Now, I was afraid to hand out these sermon notes before I preach because I was afraid some of you will have already filled them out. Um, the title of the sermon is Two Fruits in Every Family, and there is fruit number one and fruit number two at the bottom. And I was afraid some of you had already written names there. And uh, <laughs> So if you did, go ahead and erase those names. Those aren't what we were talking about. <laughs> Uh, but we're uh, we're in the middle of a sermon series, as you can tell with this construction-looking stuff on the stage, that uh, we are in the middle of a sermon series called Extreme Makeover Family Edition, and a sermon series that started on Mother's Day and will end next Sunday on Father's Day, all about the family. And uh, <clears throat> praying about this sermon, I just really God just really brought this to my. Uh, spirit today, and I believe it's going to speak to you, especially the second fruit of family. I believe God really wants to uh, bring healing in someone's heart today. As a matter of fact, He spoke that into my spirit, that God wants to release someone from their past this morning uh, and bring healing to you, and uh, we thank God for that. And Sister Lisa, you didn't get to share your rock story last week, so I'm going to let you share your rock story today as part of that, okay? All right, if you don't know about the rock stories, these are the rocks we put up on the rock wall last week, and all of these were stories about uh, how God had done things in our lives that we can point back to, um, as the children of Israel did when they crossed over the Jordan River. They took rocks out of the river and they piled them up so that every time they would pass by there, their kids would say, what what are those rocks, Daddy or Grandpa or whoever? And uh, they would say, well, this represents how God delivered us and brought us through. When we crossed see that river right there, we crossed that river. Uh, and uh, even while it was at flood stage, God did a miracle and brought us across. And they could point back to the miracles. And these are all miracle stories about what God has done in our life. Mark chapter 11, verses 19 through 25. There is no 11:26. I made a typo. Sorry. I, I freaked Stephen out. He was pulling the scriptures into the computer and he came to me and said, Pastor Jeff, Pastor Jeff, there's no verse 26. What do I do? I'll just tell him I messed up. <laughs> so I really appreciate our guys, our uh, uh, young guys who work the cameras and, and uh, wave at them back there and tell them they're doing a good job. Hey, guys, and uh, the video and all that. And uh, hey, Zach's back here. He's running the webcast. So uh, to everyone who's watching on the Internet, welcome. I don't think you meant to do that, but the return on the air condition is about six feet from that door. So, yeah, he's got it. Uh, Jason's back there running the sound. He always keeps us where you can hear us. Waving him back there. These are all the, the folks who work hard behind the scenes to make Sunday happen. We've we finally figured out that um, if the uh, computer goes down and, and the sound system goes down, we can't have church anymore. You know, it's just what do we do? You know. <laughs> No, really, I'm just joking, but uh, uh, we get we get used to those conveniences, don't we? It's about our heads. Father, I just ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And I give you thanks. Amen. Two fruits in every family. Mark chapter 11, verses 19 through 25. When evening came, they went out of the city. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. I tell you the truth, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Jesus, the previous day, as they went into the city, saw a fig tree from a distance. Now, this is not a fig tree. This is a ficus tree, but it does start with F. So we'll use this tree. Come here, tree. Jesus and his disciples are entering the city. They see a fig tree 
covered with leaves, and he goes to the fig tree looking for fruit, and he finds no fruit on the tree. So Jesus cursed the tree. He said, may you bear fruit no more forever. And they went on in the city. The next morning, they walk by the same spot, and they see the tree, and it doesn't look like this anymore. The Bible says it was withered from the roots. Anybody ever seen a tree that was dead from the roots? Sure you have. There are no leaves. I mean, it's just dead all the way up. You know, sometimes we see a, a tree that branches off, and one branch will be dead, but the other side of the tree will be green. You know, well, that tree's not dead from the roots. It's just got a dead branch on one side. But when it's dead from the roots, it's dead all the way up. You can tell not one branch has a green leaf anymore. Not one branch is showing any sign of life. So that indicates that this tree is totally dead all the way from the roots up. You know, you cut it down, it's not going to blossom back. It's dead. And they noticed that the tree, and and, and they got excited they couldn't believe it they got astonished they were like jesus you just cursed that tree yesterday and it's it's totally withered up today from the roots it's dead we can tell the whole tree is dead anybody ever um do any pruning of your trees you know they get to you know like the trees at my house those big pear trees you know they get to where if you uh drive the bus through there when we have to bring the bus out to rubbing the bus on both sides. So I noticed yesterday we got to trim those back a little bit. But you take those those uh, pruning shears and you cut off a few branches. You throw them out. You go out the next day. The leaves aren't even brown yet, right? They're still green. They're still attached. You pull on them. They're still, you know, you break open the twig. They're still, it's still green on the inside. There's still moisture on the inside. But that's what so astonished them. Jesus cursed it one day. And the next day there was absolutely no sign of life What? So ever. Now, that doesn't make a lot of sense to us. Because every tree that we are familiar with does this long before you have fruit on it. I've done some study on the fig tree after I heard a message by Winky Prattney who talked about having fig trees in New Zealand when he was growing up. And so based on what he said, I did some research. And the fig tree is the only tree that buds fruit before it buds leaves. Most trees that we know of, apple trees, any other kind of fruit tree, it has leaves first. You get lots and lots and lots of leaves. And uh, I was over at Brother Odell's the other day. He wanted me to go out and see his garden. I went out and saw his garden. And he showed me his grapevine. He said, now if you look in there, you can see it's starting to get grapes. And, you know, I looked between some of those leaves and you could see the little small stems just starting to, of the grape bunches, starting to um, develop and little bitty tiny green things on the end, smaller than a BB, you know, that were the early grapes starting to form. And so this thing had been leafed for a long time. The leaves were on it, but just now the fruit was beginning to bud. But the fig tree is just the opposite. It's first energies when spring comes goes into producing fruit before it produces leaves and I, I did a whole lot of research on that and studied that a whole lot a long time ago and found that to be validated in just about everything